This is 10 micrograms. You think that I might be able to see. I think you might be able to. Oh boy. It, it, it's an arrow right there. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. This flashlight will help. I feel like I need to, to get video of this. I don't know how. <laughs> it kind of looks like a hair, like yeah, a yeah. tiny, like a smaller than an eyelash. 어떤 물체의 무게를 측정하려면 어떻게 할까요? 가장 보편적인 방법은 이미 무게가 정해진 어떤 표준과 균형을 맞춰 측정하는 방식일 겁니다. 현재까지 인류가 가진 가장 정확한 무게추는 킬로그램, 바로 파리 외곽의 금고에 보관된 백금 이리듐 실린더입니다. 이 실린더를 복제하여 전 세계 곳곳에 보내 질량 표준으로 사용했었죠. 그리고 미국도 K20이라는 미국의 질량 표준을 가지고 있습니다. 사실은 미국도 비밀리에 미터법을 사용하는 나라입니다. 변환 상수를 써서 요상한 단위들로 표기하고 있지만요. It's just a little translation that we do here, but our country is actually on the metric system. Doesn't that seem crazy? Yes, it's stupid. <웃음> 진짜 바보 같아요. 표준 킬로그램의 질량은 불확실성이 수십 마이크로그램 정도밖에 안 됩니다. 10억분의 1 또는 약 0.0000001% 정도이죠. 꽤 정교한 편이죠. 하지만 문제가 하나 있습니다. 1kg보다 더 가벼운 무게를 측정하려면 불확실성이 증가하게 된다는 것이죠. This little object here is a 50g test weight. So it's a reference mass. Can I pick it up? Uh, uh, make with tweezers? Yeah, I mean, you don't mind? Sure. We try to keep the fingerprints off. So it's got a little bit of heft. You can feel that. A little. Yeah. What about this one? What's this? This this is 10 grams here. Yeah, that's pretty light. That's pretty light. And paper clip here is about one gram. And so how you might use one of these test masses. So if you're, you know, working in a laboratory or something like that, you could take one of these little weights and put it on here. And you could look at the scale and say, oh, okay, my scale is reasonably well calibrated here. That last digit might, you know, change a little bit, but you could sort of make some statement about whether or not your scale is accurate. When we're talking about the kilogram, you know, the, these are obviously much smaller than a kilogram, you know. How do we, you know, think about getting from that large object down to something that's, you know, this size here? One of the ways to do it is using conventional mass metrology, which is that you take the kilogram and you use a process called subdivision. 어려운 단어를 썼지만 사실 간단합니다. 그냥 두 개의 작은 질량들로 나누는 거죠. 1kg 추를 나누면 500g이 될 겁니다. 그두 개의 추의 무게가 동일한지 먼저 비교하고 두 개의 추의 합과 1kg가 같은지 비교하면 되죠. 이걸 500g, 250g, 125g 이런 식으로 계속할 수 있겠죠. 맞나요, 박사님? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could do like one uh, one common arrangement is something like we have here. This is a 500 mg mass. These are two uh, 200 mg masses and that's a 100 mg mass. So these three sum up to this. Okay. Right, so you can compare those two against each other. The smallest we have here is down there. That's a milligram. That is a milligram. That is a milligram right there. What are they made out of? Okay. These are made out of stainless steel. And we have to do things like you see this little lint-free brush here. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a speck of dust on here or something like that, it can be, can be a problem if it's a big speck of dust. You know, so, so every time we do weighings with these, you know, we'll take a, a, a lint-free cloth and a brush and clean them off a little bit. Why are they these, this sort of curious wire kind of shape? The shapes. Yeah. Uh, it helps you remember which one is which. You know, the five-sided one is five, 500 milligrams, you know. One of the interesting things from, from my perspective about this is that you can, you can really subdivide over a large range of these masses from a kilogram. You know, this is one millionth of a kilogram is a, is a, is a milligram. So you can subdivide the kilogram by a million times. You know, the, the, but you sort of pay a price for that because each time you do this subdivision, the uncertainty increases a little bit, right? So what is the uncertainty in, say, the milligram there? Uh, if you do it with a, a subdivision, it will be uh, maybe a, a, a part in 10 to the 4, one part in 10 to the 4. So like 0.01%-ish uh, range. 이런 단순히 나누는 방법보다 더 좋은 방법이 있긴 합니다. 왜냐하면 킬로그램은 더 이상 파리의 백금 이리듐 실린더에 의해 정의되지 않기 때문이죠. 100년 동안 무게가 맞는지 확인하기 위해 실린더의 복제본들은 몇 번이나 파리로 옮겨졌습니다. 그리고 매번 무게를 잴 때마다 이 실린더들의 무게는 최대 75 마이크로그램까지 차이가 나게 되었죠. 
게다가 이게 복제품이 무거워진 건지 아니면 원본이 가벼워진 건지 알 수조차도 없었습니다. 아니 이렇게 질량이 변하는 물체를 질량의 기준으로 사용할 순 없잖아요? 그래서 물리적인 물체에 의존하는 대신 자연 상수를 기반으로 정의하는 해결책이 나오게 되었죠. 바로 플랑크 상수입니다. 플랑크 상수는 광자의 주파수와 에너지의 관계성을 나타내는 기본 상수로 알려져 있습니다. 공식 2는 HF의 H죠. 그리고 한 번쯤 들어보셨을 공식 2는 MC 제곱을 통해 에너지와 질량의 관계성을 표현할 수 있습니다. 질량을 플랑크 상수로 표현할 수 있는 거죠. 2019년 과학자들은 공식적으로 플랑크 상수를 다음과 같은 값으로 정했습니다. 단위는 줄초죠. 이 상수값이 미터와 초와 더불어서 1kg을 정의하는 새로운 기준이 되었습니다. 이렇게 킬로그램을 다시 정의하게 되면서 숫자들이 가지는 의미가 굉장히 아름다워졌죠. 이 저울의 이름은 키블 저울입니다. 물체의 무게 균형을 전자기력으로 맞출 수 있죠. 이 저울은 플랑크 상수 단위로 저울에 사용되는 전기량을 매우 정확하게 판독할 수 있습니다. 이걸 다른 말로 표현하면 플랑크 상수 단위는 이 저울에 측정된 그 값이 어떻게 얻어졌는지 말해주는 것이기도 하죠. This is kind of the smaller cousin of the kibble balance. It's called the uh, electrostatic force balance, or the EFB. And this is a this is a balance that was designed specifically to measure mass sort of in the milligram range. And the kibble balance uses an electromagnet. I use a capacitor, which is basically uh, two metal electrodes that you apply a potential to. And when you apply a potential, there's an attractive force between those two electrodes. I apply a, a, an electrostatic force by applying a voltage here at this. You can see this cylinder here. Mm -hmm. There's this cylinder and there's inside of this, there's another cylinder and they're close together. So you have this concentric cylinder like this. And when you apply a voltage, it pulls that moving cylinder down in there. And by measuring the properties of the capacitor and measuring the voltage that we apply, we can know exactly how much force we get here. And then up here, we drop our mass on. So we compare our gravitational force from the mass to the electrostatic force from our capacitor. 이 연구실은 깊은 지하에 위치하고 있습니다. 장치의 열 팽창이나 수축을 최대한 방지하여 최고의 정확도를 얻기 위해 연구실의 공기 온도를 섭씨 20도로 일정하게 유지하려면 지하가 좋다고 합니다. 심지어 이 저울에서 이루어지는 모든 측정은 진공 상태에서 이루어집니다. 대기로 인한 기류나 물체에 대한 부력도 모두 제거되었죠. 심지어 중력 가속도까지도요. Here it is. It's under the chair. Right there, that triangle. Uh -huh. That is where the USGS measured uh, absolute gravity with an absolute gravimeter, 9.801-ish meters per second. Does this lab measure small forces the most accurately in the world? At the milligram level, so 10 micronewtons-ish of force. Yes, this measures force the most accurately in the world. I'm confident in saying that. But of course, you know, you can go lower than that. And this is the smallest weight and you can't see it here. This is 10 micrograms. So when you think about the uncertainty in, in a kilogram, when you take Planck's constant at a kibble balance and you realize the kilogram, you're at that level of about 10 micrograms. And that is what 10 micrograms, I mean, you can't, I, I had to put the little arrow here so you can, if you were here in the laboratory, you could look and peer down there maybe. I feel like I need to, to get video of this so people can see what 10 <laughs> I, micrograms. I, 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 you know, I, I don't know how. <laughs> it kind of looks like a hair, like yeah, a yeah. tiny, like a smaller than an eyelash, right? It is much, really, much, yeah, that's much about thinner. The, yeah, it, that's about the scale you're looking at there, yeah. I, I'm almost certain I can capture this on video. We brought a special lens with us. Oh, yeah, We yes, brought a special, special lens. 20, 24 mil macro, because I was like, we're going to need it for this. Try to find this thing. Oh, I can see it. Ah, oh, yes! Do you see it there? Yeah, 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 you uh, got it. Yes. You made this. Yes, with great trouble. <laughs> and then calibrated it on a balance. It was, man, I'll tell you, it was not easy. The, when you have that thing, you know, you can imagine what it's like trying to work with something like this, right? And this is about as small as you can reasonably expect to make something as a test weight. And if you want to measure a force smaller than that, so I have these little tiny chips here. These are atomic force microscope cantilevers. They're, they're little tiny force sensors on the end of these. They're little tiny 
cantilever beams with a sharp tip. And you can use that sharp tip to, to, to press against things and apply nanonewton to piconewton forces. But I mean, the tip is so small, though it's very, very difficult to, to see. It really requires a microscope. Is it like there's a little diving board on the Yeah, there? exactly. There's a little diving board. That's right. It looks like a little diving board. It, it's like a spring, right? And if you push on it, the more it bends, the larger the force. What is the smallest force that you want to measure? Do you have so, a yeah, I can show you. I can show you. Uh, this is one of the sensors we used to do the smallest forces that I can confidently say we've measured that are traceable in some way to the, the international system of units. Um, and that is uh, femtonewtons of force at, at about a piconewton would be like if you're stretching out a DNA molecule. So if you take a DNA molecule and stretch it out end to end, that's a piconewton. So a factor, factor of a thousand less than that was what we were measuring. So, you know, this is an example of one of the sensors we use to get to the sort of femtonewton level. This is a fused silica parallelogram flexure. You can't see it really well. So let me, I have a big, big Magnifying version glass. right here. So what we can do is we can set this vibrating and it'll vibrate re with a really pure tone. And we can see very, very small changes in force based on how, how far this vibrates up and down. I would have a little uh, laser interferometer which measures the motion of this. So we measure the displacement of this end here, and then right next to it would have a little tiny optical fiber that would deliver a known optical laser power to this. So this would be a photon pressure force, where by reflecting the light off the surface here, we actually get a very small force. If we vary that, that force sinusoidally, we vary it in time, we can get this to move up and down, and we can get it to vibrate. And we can see differences as small as, uh, as femtonewtons. In, in, in our force. So you're saying you could measure the force from a laser pointer? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. The yeah, we've done that. Was shining on that. That's right, that's, that's about, uh, about, about approximately seven piconewtons of, of force. And once again, you know, that's enough to stretch out a DNA molecule. Can I ask you the big question? Yeah, yeah. Why does anyone need to measure forces yeah. this small? Well, that's a good question. So a couple of things, you know, there are a couple of different answers to that. One is sort of the industrial relevance. Automotive manufacturers need to measure the mass of particulates that come off their exhaust, particularly in diesel systems. Particulate contamination is really kind of a big, a big deal. So you need to be able to measure 50 micrograms of these particulates for those environmental standards to be met. The laser power measurements for people who are doing industrial processes with lasers, because you can actually use the measurement of a small force to calibrate laser power. You know, pharmaceuticals, you know, you have milligram doses, microgram doses sometimes. The other um, thing that's important, I think, kind of goes to the heart of why NIST is so cool, in my opinion, is that it really helps us push the frontiers of science the scientific, new scientific discoveries benefit from the new measurement capabilities, which then feed into new precision metrology capabilities. And so that is really one of the things to me that makes NIST really special is that we're very good at sort of creating that environment where that can happen.